Hello and welcome to Frederick Bremer School. I'm Jenny Smith and I'm the head teacher. Hi, I'm Leo. Hi, I'm Naomi. And we're the head students. And we would like to tell you a little bit more about our fabulous school. Frederick Bremer is a community school in the heart of E17. We're here to do our best for every single young person in this community, to help them become the very best that they can be. I love the unity of this school because it allows me to be the person I want to be. I love that in every lesson I'm pushed to try my very best. So please come and find out a little bit more about what our school offers. Frederick Bremer School was opened in 2012 and we are very lucky to have this state of an art building. But although we are a new build school, we are on a site of rich industrial heritage and this heritage is encapsulated in the design of the school. And you may or may not be aware that throughout the 20th century this was actually a massive Hawker Sidley factory and a hub of employment in this area of Walthamstow. And on this site, huge power transformers were built. These transformers transformed energy from raw form to a usable form. And they were sent all around the world from places as far from Abu Dhabi, Argentina and Zimbabwe. And transformers were designed and built here, which were also used to power the CERN project in Switzerland. Therefore, we can proudly say that th this site has helped transform energy around the world. And alongside this history of energy transformation and releasing potential, we have also got the person this school was named after, Frederick Bremer. And Frederick Bremer is not a famous figure in our history, but he does deserve greater recognition. He was a local gas fitter and plumber who was fascinated by pushing the boundaries of what was possible. And in 1894, he invented the first petrol driven car in his back garden in Connaught Road, Walthamstow. And he liked to take this for a drive around the streets of Walthamstow to the shock and consternation of local residents. He never put this design into mass production and never made any money from it, unlike his American counterpart, Henry Ford. He was purely driven by the curiosity of what was possible. So therefore the heritage of Frederick Bremer School and the industrial heritage of this site has been encapsulated in what we do here. Transforming energy and intellectual curiosity, which helps release the potential of every young person to be the very best they can be. When asked to describe Frederick Bremer in one word, people always say the word inclusive. And our commitment to inclusivity is not simply idle rhetoric, it's the heart of what we do all day, every day. Our values are lived and breathed through our commitment to our values of respect, responsibility and integrity. And we believe passionately in developing the character of every young person. And our role is to help them turn from being a child at the age of 11 to an engaged, confident and articulate citizen of the future when they leave this school at the age of 16. We are truly representative of our local community. We are a microcosm of E17, and this diversity is absolutely our strength. We are the most diverse community school I have ever worked in. We have got, um, in terms of ethnicity and language, 42 languages spoken in the school. Our biggest ethnic group, which is white British, is less than 20% of the school population. Pakistani, 14%. We have all different social economic groups represented equally in the school and our attainment on entry is proportionate across each of the thirds, third high, third middle, third low. Um, we have a large amount of pupils with EHC P plans in the school because we've got a specialist provision for 30 pupils with autism in the school. But they are part of our mainstream school and go to mainstream lessons with additional support from specialist staff. The only area in this school where we do have a significant disparity is in terms of gender, where we have 33% girls to 66-67% boys. That is the effect of having three local girls' schools in this area. However, when you talk to our girls, you would not know that they are a minority in the school. They are confident, they are articulated, and they are very passionate about their place within Frederick Bremer School. So when I say inclusivity is truly at the heart of this school, it is well and truly embedded in our ethos and practice and how we do things around here. At Frederick Bremer School, what your child does in lessons all day, every day, is the most important part of our work. 
and we commit that for every child who comes to this school is inspired to aspire. They're known, nourished and nurtured and they are safe and supported to be the very best they can be. And it's really important that we focus our attentions on ensuring that every lesson is supported by outstanding teaching and learning. Every lesson, every day, should inspire and develop your child's learning. And we've got a brilliant set of teachers who are specialist subject practitioners and we invest an awful lot in staff training to ensure that our teaching is always up to date and is always the very best for the children that we have in this school. We spend a lot of time looking at our curriculum, reviewing and auditing it and ensuring that it delivers our aims. And our curriculum is broad and balanced. So when your child joins us in Year 7, they will study the EBAC curriculum of English, Maths, Science, and Modern Foreign Language and Humanities subjects. But alongside this, we have got a wrapped round creative curriculum and technological curriculum to be able to further develop your child's skills and understanding. We are very fortunate to be part of the Music in Secondary Schools Trust. It's a charity funded by Andrew Lloyd Webber and the Wolfson Foundation which supports the teaching of classical music in every school. Therefore, every pupil here will learn the violin, flute or viola as they join us in Year 7 and to Year 8. They will be expected to take that instrument home and to practice at home and be able to take part in our concerts and performance. Why do we do this and why do we have a focus on a classical music curriculum? Well, we believe and we have seen the impact that learning an instrument has on a young person. They develop not only fantastic musical skills, but there is a huge number of transferable skills that young pupils take to other aspects of the curriculum. Everyone loves music in some form, and what we are doing is training them and grounding them in the skills of that music. Not only by developing great musical skills, like reading music and performing music, but also those skills of practice, 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 performance, being part of a team, listening and responding to the performances of others as well as your own. And these are skills which are transferable across the curriculum and are crucial in all aspects of our learning journey. And we also believe strongly in the importance of a grounding in the creative arts. And creativity, alongside our academic rigour, is at the heart of what we deliver in our curriculum here. If your child enjoys music, or has a musical ability. They will have an opportunity to learn a second instrument when they've joined the school and also to have all the benefits of being part of the MIST programme. For example, the Saturday MIST Orchestra, the opportunity to perform on stage, for example, at the London Palladium or the Barbican. Some of our pupils have performed with Nicola Benedetti or in front of Andrew Lloyd Webber. And though we also run residential music schools, there are opportunities for scholarships and bursaries and awards as to being part of that programme. But it's not just for the very best musicians. Every single young person in this school benefits from this MIST programme. And this culminates in a range of events that we run in our school, from the hard work of everyone who takes part in our choir, in our orchestra, in our bands, in our annual music performance and drama performance, which every pupil is enabled to take a part in. When you join Frederick Bremer, you join our family. And relationships are very much at the heart of this school. We have the highest expectation of every pupil and what they are capable of achieving. But alongside this, we have the highest expectations in terms of their behaviour. And we expect pupils to operate the highest standards of behaviour and model our values of respect, responsibility and integrity at all times. As relationships are at the heart of our school, if pupils get things wrong, we expect them to A. Take responsibility for that mistake. B. Understand why it was wrong and C. Commit to putting it right. We don't expect our pupils to simply do as we say. We want them to become responsible adults, critical thinkers and own the decisions that they make. So if you're looking for a community school with a strong sense of community and moral purpose, a school that sees your child in terms of their potential, not simply a set of grades, if you're looking for a school that knows, nourishes, nurtures your child to be the very best they can be, then Bremer is definitely the school for you. Thank you.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and prospective Connaught students. My name is Ivani Higgins, and I'd like to welcome you to our open evening at Connaught School for Girls. It's a very unusual evening tonight, and uh, sadly, we're not physically able to invite you to come and look at our lovely school. But I hope that you're going to take your time and have a look at the Padlet, have a look at the things that staff and students have put on there, and really uh, get a sense of what we're about. And if you'd like to, tonight uh, from 7 to 8.30, our SLT will be live online and you can ask any questions that you might have. And then hopefully in spring, once we're through the worst of the pandemic, we'll be open to, uh, able to open our doors and invite you to come and have a look around. So although you can't visit in person, I thought I would take the opportunity to give you a flavour of uh, what our school is like. When I first came here uh, last year, I remember walking through the door and having a really lovely, warm feeling as I came in. There was a real sense of warmth and community, um, almost in the very fabric of the building. Every girl or every staff member I met extended a warm welcome. And, you know, I came to realise that actually, because we're a small school, all the staff and students know one another. And this helps this atmosphere that pervades the school. I know that we care about one another and that's what comes through. Every child is known, every child is nurtured, you can actually feel it. So if you look at our virtual tour and some of the images that we've got about the school, you'll be able to see exactly what I mean. So I started at the school, as I said, a year ago, and I thought it might be useful for you to know a little bit about my leadership background. Uh, previous to this school, I was deputy head teacher at Little Ilford School in Newham, uh, which is a great school. It's an outstanding school. And I'm proud to say that during my time there as deputy head in charge of standards, assessment and the curriculum, the school's progress figures went from strength to strength, placing it in the top 5% of all schools nationally for progress. And I'm really proud of that. You'll have no doubt heard about the fantastic results and progress that we have here at Connell year on year. Um, so you'll see that I'm leading and developing and shaping Connell School using the same underlying principles and expertise in helping to continue our journey and take Connell from strength to strength. Our school motto here is seize the day and underlying those, uh, underlying that are values, uh, which are that we care, we aim high, we learn and we achieve together to make the girls the best version of themselves. And there's a real strong focus here on achievement and excellence, but also an underlying ethos uh, that through teamwork and working hard and working together, we can together achieve much, much more, whether that's teachers working with teachers or parents and staff working together or actually students helping and supporting one another. I believe that schools should be a happy place, a vibrant place, and actually also a forward thinking environment where all of our students are nurtured and encouraged and supported to achieve the highest standards as they develop into young uh, women. I'm also passionate um, about education because it has the power to change lives. For me, it's really crucial to know the child and also their parents and uh, you know, really that a school should develop every aspect of a child, tapping into their interests and enabling their talents to really blossom. So academic achievement and personal development, I believe, should go hand in hand. And so the academic offer, which includes extracurricular uh, provision, should be second to none. And I can absolutely guarantee that it is here at Connaught. Because we believe in supporting each individual during their transition uh, into year seven. Now, usually this would happen by uh, us visiting lots of primary schools in the summer term and, and getting to know the uh, children there and helping them to settle in. And we're hoping that once we're through the pandemic, that's exactly what we'll do. Our pastoral team and our tutors work very hard looking at the children's academic progress and also their well-being because we want everybody not just to work hard but to also enjoy uh, what they do in every aspect of their time with us at Connaught. 
But we know also that uh, having parents alongside us is a vital part of this. So we take our time and we take care to develop our partnership with you from the outset. So early in the autumn term, we have an evening called uh, Call for Us, uh, sorry, Time for Us, where uh, we invite you in to look at the learning and the teaching and look at how your child will study. Uh, soon after that, we have something called uh, Meet the Tutor Evening, where you come along and just find out how your daughter is settling into school and uh, clear up any anxieties or just to talk through any issues that you might have. And then later on in the academic year, we have a parents' evening where you come and find out how your uh, daughter is actually getting on in school. So, uh, you know, in between those times, there are regular newsletters and I send out updates, especially during this pandemic, because I really believe, you know, I'm a mum myself, knowing how your child is doing and knowing how your ch uh, the school is keeping your child safe is absolutely paramount. Um, so that will happen, um, you know, constantly. At Connell, as I said, we believe in aiming high, raising aspirations and achieving excellence. Now you know, hopefully, that our track record academically is excellent. At Ofsted in October 19, uh, sorry, 2019, confirmed that our school is still good and they praised the strong, broad, balanced curriculum that we have. Uh, noting that we support all abilities uh, to reach their potential. But let's just dig into the uh, grades for a moment. I'm going to talk about the 2019 grades because those were the last grades that were um, where any child in England actually sat an exam. So our progress score is plus 0.72. So that means we over add over half a grade more than other similar schools uh, when they leave us. If we compare that nationally, the figure is minus 0.2 and in Morven Forest, it's plus 0.2. So you can see that these grades show that we are, in terms of progress, very high achieving. We're actually the second best performing uh, school in Morven Forest in terms of progress um, or if you want to put it another way we're the best performing non-denominational girls school in Morven Forest. Um, in uh, Key Stage 4 from Year 10 our students study EBAC, 90% of our students study EBAC which is a combination of subjects including English, Maths, two sciences, um, one humanity and a language. And it's commonly acknowledged that this combination of subjects gives them a really good foundation to have um, a choice at A-level, uh, but also a firm foundation as well. Some more figures. 53% um, of our students last year achieved a good pass in these EBAC subjects, compared to only 24% nationally, or 25% in Walden Forest. 85% um, of our girls achieved a good pass in English and Maths compared to 64% nationally or 63% in Walden Forest. And 55% of our girls achieved a strong pass, that's a five plus, whereas uh, both nationally and in Walden Forest, this figure was only 43%. So you can see from that that we actually have a very strong academic track record. But really for me, it's not just about academia because I believe that actually a holistic education, looking after the whole child, is equally important as academia. And I say this because I know firsthand the difference a good education can make to a child's life chances. A little bit about me, um, I'm an Asian refugee. Uh, my family was expelled from Uganda in 1972 and when we arrived here, you know, my family settled here, stripped of our wealth. Uh, so I grew up in, in, in poverty um, in East London and from the very beginning, my parents taught me that education was absolutely paramount because they knew as an Indian girl growing up in East London, I would need actually to be really confident and self-sufficient and they wanted me to make sure that I would never have to rely on anybody in life to get on. They told me that being to be taken seriously, education, intellect and confidence are the key to a bright future. And because of this firm foundation that they and education offered me, I entered into the teaching profession, not because of the summer holidays, um, but because actually it was my calling. It was my vocation to give back to the community that helped me. I really wanted to make a difference. 
Now, this might sound like a glib statement, but it is nonetheless true because I'm a firm believer that a good education can make the difference because I'm a product of it. So, it's my vocation in life to give to other young women the same opportunities that I was lucky enough to have. Now, at a time when we are still battling for equality and diversity, I want to be a good role model because I know that it's hard for our young women to get ahead in life. And I believe that you can't be what you can't see. And so simply by being here and championing girls' education, I want to raise aspiration and encourage our girls to be 10% braver, to aim higher to, uh, than they are now. And what I'm saying to them is if, if I can do it, they can do it. Now, Connell has made huge strides in championing girls' education throughout its history. Um, and you only really need to look at our alumni um, on the Padlet to know this. You'll see some of the people that have been pupils here and, and, and the great heights that they have achieved. Um, but, you know, we're not complacent and we, we strive by constantly reflecting on what else we can do to help our girls aspire to be the best. Now, these questions and the girls are at the very centre of uh, every decision that we make here at Connaught. And it's the strong relationships that I'm talking about that ensures that when they leave us, they grow into robust adults that are fit to live and work in the 21st century post-COVID world. Because alongside grades, we build resilience, we build confidence, and we build a really strong sense of community to make sure that we've provided a really seamless education uh, when they leave to go on to the next stage of their journey. So you'll see from what I've said that we really care. Our strong pastoral systems make sure that every child is known and that there is a trusted adult. So if things become difficult or a little bit too much, they've got somebody to talk to. Um, certainly the pandemic has brought mental health to the very forefront of what we do. In most schools, uh, you just have one designated safeguarding lead, but at Connell, we actually have a team who work very closely together to make sure that any child who is experiencing difficulty is looked after. And to complement this, we also have a mentoring programme for children who need that one-to-one -one support. Um, and it's been working here very well and has very, very positive feedback. In fact, in our last inspection last year, Ofsted wrote, pupil tell us, that one of the best things about coming to this school is that the staff are always there to help them if they have any worries. They said that they feel safe. So, you know, that's testament from, from the girls themselves to what we're about. We don't take this lightly. Since I came here, we've worked together as a school to build the physical safeguarding of the buildings to make sure that we are really safe. We undertake uh, stringent risk assessments, not just in uh, pandemic times, but other times as well. And these are regularly reviewed. Uh, we have enhanced cleaning. We have regular communications between the whole school community to make sure that we absolutely understand what needs to happen to keep everybody safe. For me, this is paramount. The underlying principle is that your daughter's education is a joint venture between all of the school staff, the teachers, the support staff, and then yourselves as well. This year, we have just finished refurbishment of our annex building. So now we've got state-of-the-art science and PE facilities, and we're continually looking at ways to enhance our physical environment. And this will continue to make sure that we've got a great stimulating environment for the girls to work. So you'll see from everything that I've said that I am really proud to be head teacher here and I'm really fortunate to work with a brilliant, dedicated team of professionals. Um, my colleagues work really hard, but we also have fabulous students um, who work together to build this community. Um, I hope uh, from what I've said and looking around the Padlet that you have a greater understanding now of what our school has to offer your child. You'll see that we're a vibrant school and one in which your daughter can be both happy and successful. So I want to thank you for taking the time for visiting us this evening and I really hope that we get to meet again in the near future. Thank you very much. Hey everyone, it's Catherine Norland and Rebecca Rick. Now you may know this by now, but we play 
Karens sometimes. What do you think a Karen is? A Karen is somebody that has to have her way all the time. Karens are very concerned about everybody else's business too, except their own. At some okay. point, can we talk about the bad rap of the Karen name though? I feel bad for Karens that are like awesome. And we apologize in advance to everybody named Karen. We know you're not all like it's, that. Okay, the first video is Bank Teller Poor Shame's Black Customer. I see you work at DM Capital. <laughs> Nice hair. <laughs> that was an awful wig. I mean, I have some awful wigs, but that's an awful wig. I'd like to make a deposit. Oh, um, this is for business clientele. The regular line is out there. I'm in the right spot. I just left the gym. Look at that face. I know, those eyes. Where on earth did you get this much cash? From my business. Look. When a character says, look, you already know. Anything that follows that is just like, <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. What are some other Karenisms? I mean, in the real life Karens, you're going to hear, let me speak to your manager. I don't know if we've ever done that in a DAR video, have we? Before we go any further, I need to see some ID. What do you think of this driver's license? It doesn't look real. It looks like a piece of paper. I see the right side's a little bent. It's along the lines of your wig. <laughs> <laughs> so she's being a Karen right now. <laughs> I need to see another form of ID. This is my college ID. That should work. Stanford? You really expect me to believe that you went to Stanford? Why? Is that because you couldn't get in? That's exactly right. <laughs> If I couldn't get in, what? then nobody can. You were so jealous of exactly. him. Exactly. <laughs> got better hair, he's better looking, That's right. he's better educated. He's got more money than you. Ooh, this you. woman. As much as you guys want to slap this woman, I want to slap her even more, and I'm the one that did it. Does this look real to you? Uh, yeah, that's definitely real. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> So many nice comments on that one. I'd like to deposit this too. $20,000. Seriously, what are you doing with this kind of money? And you guys ever you meet those kind of people that are absolute about everything and because yes. they're not flexible? Mine. He's my son and he's three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're basically a toddler. There you go. Just, I don't see it any other way. If we're not watching Blippi, we're not doing it. You know what? I had enough of this. Just give me my cash and check so I can go. Security! It kind of looks like The Rock a little bit. Is everything okay? No, it's not. This man gave me a fake ID, lied about his job, oh. and now he's trying to deposit a fraudulent check. More than like she's stereotyping me while I'm just trying to make a simple transaction. I know a crook when I see one. This is like a 1950s noir movie, because you're like, I see, I know a crook when I yeah. see one. He's a crook, you know? I see him around every corner. Who says the word crook? Never judge a book by its cover, because mm. I'm not only an employee for DM Capital, I'm the CEO. Can you give us a sample of when when Karen is wrong, how she laughs? I have someone here who's trying to cash a fraudulent check. Can you transfer me to the owner, please? Thanks. Just assumes it's fraudulent. You see? You're calling me. How would she not know that was her biggest cut? You know, when client. you're a bully and when you're a Karen, you have these blinders on. Is everything all right here? No, John. Everything is not okay. You see, Karen here just stereotyped me because of the way that I looked. You what? I wow. mean, can you blame me? Oh. Just look at him. God! Oh Sorry. my oh. gosh! You should see when I'm reading the script, I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding? And then I go, oh wait a minute, I gotta play that. That's why I wore the wig. Oh, oh. I did not <laughs> want to be associated with this woman. Mr. Moore, I am so sorry. I assure you this will never happen again. Because Karen here is fired. Now we are going to watch the video I was in, a lady calls cops on black man. 
You got a wig on. Hers is much better. <laughs> Styling in the back. It's not about the blonde, it's about the swipe over. Because I researched Karen hairstyles, and there's a certain swipe over of the hairstyle that Karens wear. Hey you, excuse me, stop right there. What are you doing with two bikes? You know what it is? I already have this figured out. She's jealous that he has two bikes because go. her broke down Honda has the paint peeling <laughs> off the hood. It's another jealousy and, thing. And look at EP's like, like oh, oh now here we go like, again. Not this again. Yeah. I just came from the bank. <laughs> <laughs> if you really need to know, some guy just stole it from a kid and I'm getting it back for him. You know? You really shouldn't judge someone without getting to know them first. So yours was don't judge a book by its cover, and mine is you should really get to know someone before you judge them. We're just judgy. My son and I just moved into this neighborhood, and we don't need- I just moved into this nice neighborhood with my beat up Honda. <laughs> is that your car? <laughs> that was my actual car. <laughs> I mean, over 200,000 miles on that workhorse. Mm. Hello? Yeah, my name is Karen. <laughs> How about Brenda, uh, Samantha? I'd like to report a suspicious man who has stolen a bike. Come quick, he's getting away. You guys need to vote in the comments. Which Karen is worse, the bank teller Karen or I think the guy stole the bike Karen? That is the man that stole the bike. I was just trying to get the bike and return it to someone. Do you have any paperwork? A registration for it? No. Do bikes even have registrations? This is all wrong, all wrong, all the way around. This it's... might be a worse scenario than the bank one. I was riding down the street when I saw a man trying to steal a bike from some kid. I tried to stop him, but he took off with the bike. Even though the bike thief is taking a bike from a child, I actually think that Karen is worse. So you see, I didn't steal this bike. I was simply trying to return him to the kid who it belongs to. All lies. You can tell he isn't telling the truth just by looking at him. Oh, okay, that's it. I might be worse You're than you. You're fired. At least my Karen got fired. This woman, oh. you know what? She needs to go to jail. Do you have any weapons on you? Or drugs? No. Haven't done drugs ever in my life. Look at that face. Oh. That's her guilty look because she's probably got some in her purse. <laughs> Wait. Dylan? Stop the tape. Shut the front door, the back door. It's your own <laughs> son. Son, this man is a criminal. He stole a kid's Three times. bike. He didn't steal anything. That's my bike. Why didn't you recognize that that was I... your son's bike? I would know my son's bike. Hello? Luckily, he tried to help and chase down the robber to get my bike back. This man helped you? That's what I've been trying to tell you. Wow. Hello? I am so sorry She's about the misunderstanding. <sighs> I am so sorry. Okay. Hey! Okay, I want to hey! hear more. I want to hear more. I never should have judged you before I got to know you. Boom. It's okay. Because honestly, Aww. this stuff happens to me all the time. That is so sad. Just glad little man got his bike back. Aww. Thank you. And I'm grateful that we have good people like you in our neighborhood. Who is more despicable? Yeah, comment below which one was the worst, Karen. If you want to get more content like this, subscribe, like, share it, hit the bell button. Just do it. <laughs>